No doubt about it. We make a lot of choices every single day, don't we? In that sense, we have free will. However, long before we started making choices, we were conditioned by the society and culture into which we were born. We were shaped by the same carnal mindedness that previous generations have and continue to endure. Out of that carnal mindedness, self was formed and we were taught to embrace it, sustain it, promote it, and add to it. Today, radio, television, and social media flood our minds with a staggering amount of information every day, information that embraces, sustains, promotes, and adds to the self. In this way, we have no free will, for we are captive to its conditional love. This love is based in pride. You will be like God. Sin is the manifestation of the conditional love of the self. At its core, sin or lawlessness, that is bad behavior, results from our love for the self overriding our love for others. This is why Jesus taught that we must deny the self. But before we can deny it, we must recognize it for what it is. Jesus said, whoever desires to save his life will lose it. So the self is our life, our desires, and our opinions and biases based on the conditioning we receive as children and continue to receive as we mature. John declared, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What did John mean by the world? Was he speaking of the natural and beautiful vistas with which we are all familiar? Not at all. Rather, he was speaking of the spirit of the world, which motivates the course of this world, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. And what is this spirit, if not the spirit of self-aggrandizement? But none of this is for the sake of condemnation. But this is the pattern outlined in the Genesis parable. We begin as natural, innocent, a blank slate. But we are soon cultured to embrace the identity that is based on the culture into which we are born. But this is still not the problem. The problem arises when we begin to think of ourselves more highly than we should, and so fall into carnality. What follows this? Paul said, it is the spiritual. This threefold process from natural to carnal to spiritual is the process of sowing and reaping, which in turn is the process of resurrection. Back to the tree of knowledge, indicative of God's law. It is here that we encounter our maker's cleverness because the fact that none of us are capable of keeping it is a constant reminder that we are all on equal ground, that no one is better than anyone else. But what happened once Adam and Eve ate of the tree of knowledge? Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. A couple of really good points come to light here. First of all, in the story of Adam and Eve, there is no apple. The word fruit is used, but it does not tell us what type of fruit it is. That being said, look again at Genesis 3-7. They sewed fig leaves together. Fig leaves? Yes. Might they have taken these leaves from the same tree they had eaten from? Given the fact that Jesus dealt with and spoke about a fig tree, I'm inclined to think so. But what exactly does sowing fig leaves together represent? Before I answer, let me share the following with you from Google Gemini when I asked, are figs fruit? Figs are interesting because they blur the lines a bit. In the common sense, yes we definitely consider them fruit. They're sweet, fleshy, and we eat them like other fruits. But botanically, they're not quite the same. A fig is actually a syconium, which is a special type of fleshy inflorescence. An inflorescence is a cluster of flowers, and that's what a fig really is. Hundreds of tiny flowers packed together inside a fleshy receptacle. The tiny seeds you see in a fig are each technically the fruit of an individual flower. 
So to confuse things further, figs are both fruits in the culinary sense and not fruits in the botanical sense. I must say I was surprised when I read this, but pleased afterward. If the tree of knowledge represents the law of God, then a fig tree would be far more appropriate for this representation than any other fruit. So what does it mean that their eyes were opened and they knew that they were naked? How might this apply to the law? The following from Hebrews 4 tells us, For the word of God is living and active, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Do you see it? No creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Clearly, this is sowing and reaping. But what did Adam and Eve do? They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. Let me speak plainly. Take a moment and think about what naked really means. It does not mean someone in a bathing suit. Rather, we consider someone naked when their private parts are exposed. And what is one of the primary functions of private parts? Propagation, which is just another word for sowing and reaping. So when Adam and Eve sewed fig leaves together and covered their private parts, they were attempting to avoid the consequences of their actions by hiding behind the law. But the Lord sees all, even the private stuff. This was the sin of the scribes and Pharisees. Not only did Adam and Eve make loincloths, they sought to hide themselves from the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. But do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Friend, God's voice abides in this principle because it came from the mouth of God. All creation testifies of this truth. Might this be how humankind lives by every word? Finally, we come to what I believe brings death. When God reckoned with Adam, he said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree and I ate. Consider this statement in light of the following. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. The woman was deceived, but Adam was not. Eve acted out of deception, but Adam? He acted out of pride and rebellion. How do we know? Instead of protecting the woman, he blamed her. And accusation? It is the main characteristic of pride. It is how most of us hide. Free will? Yes. But the choices we make are heavily influenced by the mindset that captivates our present world, the mindset of self. But a change is coming.